Welcome to Beer Stories from Beer Story Brewhouse. This is a grain to glass video of my low ABV stout. Um, it's a really great stout and I recommend you to, uh, yeah, to try and brew it. So I have a confession. I don't really have any videos from brewing this beer um, because when I brewed it, I didn't think I would make a grain to glass video about it. Um, but so many people have asked about this and they are asking on Facebook and different kind of forums about how to brew low ABV beer and how to brew a low ABV stout. Um, so I thought I would make kind of a grain to glass video. I'll run through the recipe with you and have a tasting of this beer as well. Um, basically, this is a point, 0 0.9 ABV beer. Um, it's a stout and it's still full flavored. Um, I think I'll start with just telling you what this beer tastes like and then run through the recipe afterwards. So what I get from the aroma is uh, yeah, roasted flavors, roasted coffee, And that's basically it. Most of these beers, low ABV beers, both commercial and, and whatnot, they have a really thin body and they are really watery. This is not at all. This is pretty creamy. It has a thick mouthfeel. Um, and it's all because of this. I'll tell you about this later. And the flavor is uh, also roasted coffee. A little bit of sweetness. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a great beer. Um, and it's almost non-alcoholic. I actually brought this beer for uh, one of my uh, brewing networks with uh, commercial brewers as well. Uh, and we were at one of the breweries and they lined up their beers and uh, I brought this as well. And most people actually drank this instead of commercial beers because uh, it tasted great, tasted like a stout. And uh, some of them have to, had to, uh, to drive home, so it was perfect for them. You can taste that there isn't any alcohol in it. You will always be able to taste that in these kind of beers. Um, but does it matter? Well, not, not for a Sunday afternoon or something like that. Um, I actually, I brewed this yeah, half a year ago, I think. Uh, and this is one of the last pints I have left of this. So I thought I'd make that video, this video now. Um, it hasn't really lost flavor or anything. But you can, you can always taste that kind of uh, full richness that the alcohol gives. You'll always be able to taste that it's, that it's not there. If you had two stouts, one of them eight ABV uh, and this one, you can tell the difference always. But it doesn't really matter. I can really still enjoy this beer. Yeah, so it's great. I have uh, I I brewed this one up uh, together with uh, with a New England IPA, also low ABV, um, and those beers have been great just having around in my garage. Um, yeah. You don't, I don't want to drink alcohol every day. Um, and I don't, but yeah, this just made life a little bit better, I think. So, and that's why I'm making this video because I've been asked a lot about this kind of beer. Um, so um, yeah, there's a special technique for doing this and doing it right. Um, 
there are three major points, I think, for doing this right. Um, the temperature that you uh, mash your beer at using glycerin and having the right grain bill, of course, but also the right pH is pretty important here for food safety, but also for making the beer shine. Um, but let's start with the numbers, uh, as you can see here. Um, ABV, 0 0.9, original gravity, 1030, final gravity, 1023, EBC, it's a pretty dark beer, 110. Uh, IBUs are only um, 15. So there's not a lot of hops in here. And, uh, and that's because, of course, of the, the bitterness unit to gravity unit. It has to be balanced still. So uh, when there's low alcohol, you need fewer hops. I boiled it for 40 minutes uh, and also mashed for, I only mashed for 30 minutes actually in this beer. Uh, that's enough. You don't need full conversion, but with this thin a mash, you will get full conversion anyway for the 30 minutes. But this is pretty important here because um, you can see the mash. 176 Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius. That's a high mass temperature and you really want the mass temperature to be that high because you won't create any uh, that many fermentable sugars in your in your wort. And this is what you want because we want uh, we want not a high OG original gravity uh, but the original gravity, the sugar content that we do have, we want that to be as unfermentable as possible. Um, and I kind of succeeded in that. But what really helps us along here is, is the yeast. So uh, I've used uh, Windsor Lelleman. Um, that's a uh, maltotriose negative yeast. And that means that it can only, they cannot uh, break down maltotriose, um, which leaves us with a higher final gravity and less ABV. As simple as that. So as you can see here, the recipe is uh, for 25 liters or six and a half gallons. I've used, yeah, quite a, a grain bill, as you can see, actually. It's about 25% Munich and the dark Munich, about 13% 30 Caram Munich, uh, three, 13% Crystal, it's 150 Crystal, about 13% Flaked Oats, about 10% Carafa Special 3, about 10% Melanoidin, about 6.5% uh, Carafa Special 1, about 6.5% Chocolate Wheat, and 3% roasted barley. And for this I've used uh, a 30 minutes, 30 minute boil, or 40 minute boil, but at 30 minutes I've added uh, 20 grams of uh, East Kent Goldings uh, or 0.70 ounces of, uh, of East Kent Goldings and 15 grams at 15 minutes left of the boil or uh, 0 0.0 yeah, half an ounce in US terms. So this is the grain bill. As I said, only one package of Windsor yeast. Um, the mass temperature was really important, 176 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or 80 degrees Celsius. And um, yeah, well, the fermentation profile is not that complicated. Uh, seven days at a kind of room temperature and seven days for a diacetyl rest. And then just carb the way you want. If you force carbonate, uh, I would recommend that because if you carbonate with sugar, you'll raise the ABV about 0.03. So 
So we don't really want that. The water profile, well, mm, I just went for an Irish dry stout. Um, you could have gone either way. You could also uh, yeah, just bump up the chlorides to make the malt profile yeah, kind of more in your face. But, uh, but I think this was uh, yeah, it, pretty good. Um, so the really important thing here is before you, uh, when, when you rack it over to your fermentation tank, you really have to, uh, to check your pH values because you need to acidify the beer to a 4.6 pH value. It's really important for both for the beer to shine a bit, but also for, for, for food safety. The yeast, when you normally ferment a beer, the yeast will bring down the pH to a level where it's food safe. But uh, when it's fermented as little as this is, uh, you need to uh, acidify it so you're able to call it food safe. So that's really important. You can get pretty sick if you get an infection from this uh, otherwise. Basically, that's it. Um, when the beer is done, I've added the Griswin when the beer is done. Um, but you can, uh, you can also add to the fermentation tank. Uh, that's uh, no problem. Um, you do this because uh, it's almost taste free and it will thicken your beer. It will give your beer a great mouthfeel. Three milliliters per liter. Uh, that's the perfect amount. So if you keg your beer, you have to uh, just add up to, uh, to 19 liters um, or five gallons. You don't use a lot of this. You have to find a glycerin that's uh, food safe, of course. Um, I just added it to a, a small amount of water and uh, raised the temperature to just below boiling point so that it was uh, free of any microorganisms and then uh, let it cool a bit and add it to the beer. Um, yeah, and it, it really makes a difference. So you have to use this. It, uh, it's a world of difference. You can't get the beer as good. It will be kind of like water if you don't use this. And this makes the beer just get a great mouthfeel. Um, yeah, so it feels like a thick, rich beer. Of course, the taste lacks a bit. But this beer, it doesn't have any uh, those cheap non-alcoholic beers you get where it's all the, the it's peppery, it's thin. And it's kind of, it's, you can taste that it's not fermented because uh, your teeth will get, uh, yeah, kind of rough from, uh, from the starch, I guess, in the beer. This, is, this has none of that. It feels like a real beer, tastes kind of like a real beer, just needs the alcohol, um, but it's a great beer. So that was uh, the recipe. I've uh, made this a couple of times now. I started using uh, lactose. I don't do that anymore. Um, and I've also added cold brew coffee to one. That was really great. You can add lactose, it's, it's not bad. Uh, I just don't like the way lactose age. Um, so I don't use it anymore. I just bump up the, um, well, the melanoidin, uh, actually, or the dextrin malts. But it's a great beer. You should try and brew it at home. Uh, I really recommend it. You can find the recipe down in the description. There are also, there are also videos on how I use uh, glycerin and stuff like that. So uh, I guess that was it. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about low alcohol beer, I really recommend you to uh, find a guy from Australia called uh, Ultra Low Brewing. Uh, it's a really cool guy. Um, I talked to him about this recipe, yeah, about a year ago, I think, or more even. Um, and we kind of helped each other develop a great stout recipe. And uh, this is kind of a new development of that. Um, but he has a lot of tips on how to brew low ABV beer. And that's actually where I learned to do this the right way, I think. Um, so yeah, check him out. Uh, also check the recipe out and uh, yeah, just have a happy brewing out there.